Okay, I don't right. need to be on camera for this. Yeah. We don't need to have a two person. It could be a one and a half person podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Muscle of Yarn podcast. <laughs> and just trying to get back into the groove of things. I'm pretty sure it's Thursday <laughs> afternoon, March 1st. So, it is March 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Um, i still not quite sure what time it is. <laughs> it yeah. is almost 3.30? Yeah. 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 Um, so... This is the Muscle of Yarn podcast, and we are coming to you from our yarn store in Shelburne, Vermont, in yep. the U.S., for yep. any of our international viewers. Yep. And I'm Kelly. And I'm Angela. And you can find the store on all kinds of social media, um, Facebook, Ravelry, Instagram. Those are the three we use the most. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a Periscope account. Uh, our, our website, of course, um, muscleofyarn.com. We're on Twitter because when I'm out on Twitter, on Twitter messing around, every once in a while I'll be like, hey, look, there's our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, well, I automatically populate from Instagram. So anytime I put something on Instagram, it, it automatically everywhere. goes on to. It's amazing. The I know. It's, amazing. it's handy because then, I mean, you can. So, and some places do have one person who handles all social media. Mm -hmm. Some people, some places makes have it, more than one. Makes it easier. But, yeah. So if since we're so small, <laughs> and I can just um, do one little entry. Yeah. Exactly. But anyway, so if you would like to follow me out on social mm -hmm. media, um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Instagram as Kelly O Spins, and you can find me on Ravelry as Kelly Spins. Yeah. And as we say every week, feel free to follow yeah. us, friend us, whatever the yeah. term is and for the. Thanks for all the new follows on Instagram. Yeah. It's been really cool. Yeah, and on our YouTube channel, yeah. we've have, um, been out on that for a while. We've so. that's been growing too. Awesome. So thanks to all of our new subscribers, and Fantastic. of course everybody who's been with us <laughs> since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Thanks, mom. <laughs> the moms. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you guys yeah. subscribing and following along with us. And um, it's been a lot of fun getting to meet so many really fun people through the podcast. So. Yeah, and social media, which yeah. is driven by the podcast. So it's yep. been it's been great. Um, yeah, we've gotten the great chance of you know now that people have you know the stories here. We they've come in and and we've gotten to meet some people in person, which is so fun. And at Rhinebeck, we've met people and Vermont Sheep and Wool. So um, and we plan to be at those venues. I'm still trying to figure out how to finagle a trip to Maryland Sheep and Wool. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it happen this year. Well, but it's maybe. it's a hard time. There's it's yeah. early May and there's yeah. always it's usually I think the first weekend in May. And there's just always a lot that's going on. So, um, yeah. But. Yep. So we like to start this podcast with our uh, pick of the week. Yes. And so the way that that works is um, we, Kelly and I, each pick something um, from the store, an item, yarn, or some other item, and we offer a discount code. Um, yep. So you can have 10% off of whatever the item is with the weekly code. Uh, and the code is good for two weeks Yep. Uh, from the time of air. Actually, we make the code live now because whatever. You're not going to see this till tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. So. This won't be uploaded until Friday, so yep. it'll be active by then. Yep. Yep. So do you want, I can start, why don't I start You're with start? my okay. pick of the week. So I'm going with a non-yarny item this week. <laughs> uh, this is a... Uh, it's yarn related. It is yarn related. It's a uh, kind of new to us company and I will uh, totally blame Legacy Fiber Arts, mm -hmm. uh, Chelsea and Sue for uh, making the connection or for causing me to fall down the rabbit <laughs> hole to order some things from her. Uh, which has then prompted us to get them into the store. Yeah. Um, so our my pick this week is our Woolen and Co. Uh, line of products, and we have uh, we have some of her uh, handcrafted soap, which and is just that's a hand soap. Yep. Um, and I think we've got 
four different scents in that. Yeah, I brought over the cherry blossom, um, but we've got a few other uh, scents as well. And I, I will say I took um, a box of her soap on vacation with me because I thought, oh, it's in the soap. Oh, it's in the box. Solid. It's solid. It'll yeah. be fine. And I used this while I was away. We might have to pause for a minute. <laughs> Um, Maybe this, not. this soap is, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I loved it and it lasted really well. Yeah. And it was great. You know, it didn't make my face break out or, you know, uh, anything nice. like that. Okay. So it was, um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I would highly recommend this soap if you're looking for a nice handcrafted uh, soap that retails for $7. Um, so it's not bad for a handmade uh, soap, it's a blend of avocado, mango, and shea butter. So Yeah, all great, mm -hmm. you know, moisturizing natural ingredients. So. Mm -hmm. um, yep. so we have a line of soap. Um, we also have a line of like hand salve. So she's got one that she calls cool, one that she calls warmth, and another that she calls soothe. And there's descriptions on our website of mm -hmm. all the different ingredients that are in them and kind of what they, they help with. Um, mm -hmm. So depending on the ingredients that she's got in there, yep. um, you know, they'll either help with inflammation or help tired muscles or that kind of thing. Yep. So, uh, you know, you can check out all the, the details there. And I have, um, I think I have two of them. Yeah. I can't remember which two. I want to <laughs> say warmth and soothe maybe. Uh, and I use it. It's you know I just have it tucked in my bag, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's nice. I, I like it. I haven't tried it yet. Although yeah. I was looking at them the other day, and I'm thinking about getting Soothe because that one smells really really good. Yeah, they all smell. They all super do. good. So these retail for ten dollars, and they come in this great little pen. And then the final product that we have uh, from Caitlin at Woolen and Co is her um, wool wash. So it's a bar wool wash. Um, I've also been using this because this was one that I ordered uh, initially from her, mm -hmm. and uh, I really like it. It makes my, I've been using it to wash socks, and so it mm. makes the socks really soft. Yeah, because there's the lanolin in it. I yeah. used it when I washed, what the yeah. heck? I washed a bunch of wool yeah. wear, mm -hmm. wool items the other a couple weeks ago, and, um, and it, it makes softens them it soft in a way that mm -hmm. like a lot of other wool washes yeah, don't because it puts lanolin back into yep. them, which is nice. So this is a bar. So the way I use it is I have a big like three gallon bucket that I wash all of my woolens in. So I put that in the sink and I start running the water, and then I hold the bar under the soap and kind of rub it or yep. water and kind of rub it between my hands. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna well at least for me it doesn't suds because I have hard water in my yeah, house. Yeah, I do too. Um, but you can tell that there's soapy stuff in the water, yeah. and then I add my woolens to that and let it soak. Um, I've actually done both where I've rinsed it. Mm -hmm. Again, and then I did another set where I didn't rinse, and I think you can get by without doing the rinse. I think it so. would depend to you know how much lanolin you want to leave mm -hmm. in the yeah. um, in in the fibers themselves. Um, yeah. If you're, but lanolin has a, a, I think you have to get the water to like 120 degrees to get the the wool to release the lanolin. So you have to do a pretty warm rinse to get it to come out, back out. 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 Anyway. Um, so. I don't think it would take much of it out if you even if you just did a cool rinse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't rinse mine when I used yeah. it and it was fine. Yeah. And it, it had a nice um a nice scent, scent. but mm -hmm. it, it wasn't overpowering and it didn't last forever. Yeah. Which is, you know, which is kinda nice because especially when, you know, I work around a lot of other people and some people are sensitive to scent so yep. um you know so if i'm teaching or something yep. i don't want to have a lot of really strong scent yep. and i think we have um six different kind of scents lot. of the wool wash we got more of the six wool or wash. seven yeah. yeah something so um, we've got a good variety of different yep. scents and the wool that. wash retails for seven dollars and fifty cents so it, you know it's i've enjoyed all of her products and i will continue to buy them mm -hmm. um so yeah, so with Give the try. coupon code this week, yeah. you can get 10% off any of the woolen products that we carry in the store. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So with that, our coupon code, because we always <laughs> do it in between the two. We do. Just to, you know, give you, because we know you're all excited. 
Uh, it's going to be, did I forget it already? It is going to be Weekly Pick Woolen Gang. Yep. And it'll be, it'll be down here at the bottom. Yeah. So Woolen is, we're using the company name for Woolen & Co. So it's W-O-O-L-I-N. Woolen Gang. Gang. G -A -N -G. And that'll make sense in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which. <laughs> I will now turn the floor over to Kelly <laughs> for an explanation. So. <clears throat> Wool and the Gang, not Woolen Gang, <laughs> but Wool and the Gang um, has come out with these fun sock kits. So they are a self-patterning sock kit and they knit up so you get these what look like spots, like cat spots, leopard, I think leopard, leopard spots. Yeah. Is that what it would be? I think oh, it'd be really. leopard. Um, so the yarn is actually made by uh, Regia. Jaguar. Jaguar spots. Jaguar. Jaguar. Yeah, so it's a Regia um, self patterning sock yarn. So if you've worked with Regia before, um, then you'll be familiar with the yellow yarn in here. So you pull that out. These are a pair, of what they would do as Parafex socks. Um, so you pull that out and then you'll knit and you'll get the, the cuff. And then you, so you work in rib until um, the next color comes. And then you work down and then you'll see the blue again and you work the heel and then you work down until you see this blue again. Um, so the only tricky thing with this is you have to get gauge. So if you want these spots on here to line up like that and, and form the actual spots like that, you have to have to get gauge. And so you, it's a little tricky. And I know that people, I haven't, I haven't sat down with one of these kits yet yeah. to play around with it. Um, and there is a warning on here. It says, experienced suckners only, folks. Kind of magic is one tough cookie. Her self-patterning nature means she works her magic as she goes. You can concentrate on becoming the ultimate knitting master, and she will do the rest. Make something unique to you. Um, so it says, important, the self-patterning yarn requires a cast on of 60 stitches to retain the intended design. Find the full pattern inside. So you, you do have to, there are some specific guidelines for getting um, the socks to actually come out so that the, the, sh the pattern will line up. But that being said, if you want to attempt these guys, um, if you've been knitting socks for a while, we've got three of the colors in sock. Those are the three colors. And we'll, of course, have links to uh, these on um, our website so you can find them. Um, but so if you're interested in trying these, you'll get 10% off of your kit and mm -hmm. you can give it a go and see if, if you can get gauge, yeah. then the spots will come out and they're kind of fun. And so, if not, you would also have probably a very interesting looking sock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just desire like, you know what, I don't care what they look like, I just want to knit with some mm -hmm. some perfect sock yarn and mm -hmm. then these are these could be for you. So they're kind of fun. So this is how they come. Um, there's instructions inside, and then um, there's the ball of yarn. So, nice. And I think, so somewhere between a US one and three needle, and it's obviously gonna depend on your own tension, um, and they give all the information about uh, the gauge that you need to, to have in order to get those to come out right. Nice. Nice. So, and it's like 80 gram skein, so it's a little... Yeah, they're not a really super tall sock. Um, so they have a, a shorter cuff, and um, and the actual ribbing is really short too. It's only maybe an inch, maybe not even quite an inch of ribbing. So it's not not a really tall sock, but they're they're kind of cute. They'd be fun for summer, yeah, um, or spring because they're good spring colors. Yeah. Especially look at that one. That's really light. So it's light blue and pink. And so so yeah. So ten percent off. Yeah. Weekly pick woolen gang. Woolen gang. Woolen. So, um, and I'll put that information in here before it goes live. Yep. And I will put all of the links in show notes for you guys. So, nice. check them out there. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. So, I heard that you might have some finished objects because I have. I do. I have none. So, let me talk about what I'm wearing first because you guys got to see this on the last episode two weeks think. ago yep i wasn't mm -hmm. wearing it because i hadn't woven in ends and i hadn't blocked it yet but um it was still a little damp this morning but i didn't put it on until i came into the store 
and by then it was mostly dry anyway. So I'm wearing derecho Yay. and I have it over a long sleeve tee because at the end of the day, I'm just going to take it off and put it on a mannequin so it can be a shop model. So, um, but it's also, it's kind of a nice way to wear, you know, so that here. you get more use out of it. So it's not just a summer top. Um, I, I like wearing things over long sleeve t-shirts. Yeah. Um, it's, it's comfortable and, you know, keeps my core warm, but, um, I don't get too hot either. Um, so this is a Barocco pattern and it's Barocco yarn. It was using the Remix light and I will link to all the details in show notes. And it was a really fun knit, really easy. And the yarn was a really, a nice yeah. yarn to knit with. I enjoyed it. Nice. Um, so that's, that's what I did. Awesome. That's what I'm wearing. Um, so I have an FO. It's going to be like the Kelly show. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, and part of the reason that I have like FOs and stuff is because of the classes I was doing. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to, you know, I had samples that I wanted to get ready and things. And I showed you the headband that I did for my brioche class, but, um, not everybody wants a headband. And so if I had knitters in my class that were pretty adventurous and wanted to do the decreases, um, and wanted to turn their headband into a hat, it's really not that much more, you know, to knit another few inches and then do some decreases. So uh, in the pattern, I included, um, you know, just how to do the headband, but then also how to go, you know, how far to knit and then start your decreases. So I ended up doing a sample so that people could see that. And it's just a very basic brioche hat. Um, I used... Uh, Malabrigo Mecca, which is a bulky weight yarn. That's the color that's kind of in between. On this side, it's kind of the main color. And that's in the Piedras colorway, um, which it came out really fun. I like the way it knit up. And then the um, the cream color is uh, Talkie Arlington, which that gray vest that's behind us, that's what that's knit out of. That's not out of vest, but it's a capelet. Um, everybody always asks us. Um, it's a capelet, and that's what that's in it out of, um, and it has alpaca in it, so it does have a fuzzy halo to it. Um, so I'm probably going to put this pattern on Ravelry. It's, uh, if you haven't done brioche before, if you want to do brioche hat, um, it's, it's very basic, and because I wrote the pattern for the, a class, I put tons of extra little details and tidbits and things like that in the pattern. Yes. Uh, because sometimes, you know, when you're just taking on brioche, there's little things that you don't always get unless you're being taught or, you know, really following some good instruction. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to include some little tidbits like that in the nice. pattern. So I think I'll probably publish that up on Ravelry. Um, so I will probably include a link to that at some point. It probably won't happen before this goes live, um, but I will... The pattern's all done, so it might because all I have to do is just upload it. Yeah. So anyway, um, and I called it "How far will you brioche?" because you can do the headband or you can do the hat. So that's what it's called. So fancy. I know, right? So that's my fo, uh, and I don't have a project page for it, but I will try to get that done too. And then the other my my half finished object that I have is I have a little worsted shorty sock and I should have grabbed one of the sock blockers to put this on, but I didn't. Um, because if I didn't have boots on, I'd offer my foot. <laughs> I could. I have tights on because I'm wearing a skirt. I could put it on over the top of my tights. Um, but I did an intro to sock knitting class. Yeah. And I like to teach when I'm teaching, you know, somebody who's it's never right knit socks before on a nice worsted oh. weight yarn. So this is 100% super wash wool. This is Barocco Ultra, and it's really nice and soft. Um, and it doesn't have nylon in it, but I, a lot of times for the thicker yarns, they're, they're going to wear better than a thinner sock yarn would anyway. Well, you're also probably not putting it in a shoe, which is causing a lot of friction. Yeah. Um, um, as well. Or if you, you know, some people will make um, like a taller cuff and have them as like, like a boot, boot sock. sock. Yeah. Um, and in that case you would, but you could also, uh, we've got reinforcing thread. You could all, always carry a strand of reinforcing thread mm -hmm. with the yarn. Oh, okay. um, but they don't wear as, as quickly just because... Um, you know, there are more surface area yeah. on the yarn. Yeah. So, um, so I've got one done. I've got one. I just turned the heel cause I had to have one so I could show them how the Kitchener at the end. And then yeah. I had another one ready, um, a swap out. 
so that I could show them how to um, turn the heel. Nice. So um, this one is done, and then the other one will be done soon, and then I'll have a great pair of little house socks. So. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So that's nice. my half finished object. Nice. Yeah. And then I've got, I've been pretty monogamous with my knitting. Mm, I have been a little bit, though you wouldn't know it. <laughs> know it. So I have been diligently working on Virgil. So pretty. Thank you. I like the way it's turning out. I did have a moment when I was knitting in the car in sort of the bright sunlight, mm. and the way it was hitting the green was almost making it look like yellowish. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I like oh, these no. three together. <laughs> um, but I like it, it. I like it. I really do. Um, so this is Virgil. It's a, a color work, short sleeved, like T uh, and fingering weight. And I apparently thought that I could finish this <laughs> for Ravel well, You know, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have gotten uh, to the point where I've taken off for the sleeves. So my little sleeve caps are kind of over here and I've done about an inch. Um, but I was telling Kelly that at this point here, where the sleeves are on, there's was literally like 400 and some stitches on the needles. So each row took forever. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I know. So now I'm down into the stockinette, um, stockinette, stockinette, stockinette land. Um, and this, it's too big to really be kind of like a travel project because um, it is a sweater, but it's something that can just kind of hang out and I can pick up here or there. Um, so I'm probably going to start working on a few other projects so this may get set aside uh, just because I have a couple other time sensitive projects I need to get a move on <laughs> that I was going to work on on vacation and didn't really happen. Um, so I should probably attend to those. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. So now I'm, you know, the long slog for the body. Uh, and there's more color work um, down in the body so it has and this is I'm sort of on the fence about this so it has you do two of this band and then two of this band so it's a pretty thick mm. color work band I th so at I the very think, bottom yeah well kind of like before the the rib not the ribbing they do like a seed stitch okay so before the seed stitch edging I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one of each I like the color work. I just mm -hmm. don't know that I want that much color work at the bottom. Well, that's me because I'm I'm heavier on my mm -hmm. lower half me than too. I am on my upper half. Me A lot too. of times if there's color work down at the bottom, I'll just completely omit it because yeah. From Amy Herzog I, and all the, you know, fit the flatter and like the thing the Yeah. and and other people who have, you know, rules about dressing yourself to you know highlight the areas you do like and things like that yeah. a lot of times I don't want to draw attention to my lower I'm, half I'm on the fence yeah I might it may be one of those things where when I get to the point where I have to make the I'm not doing I'm not going to do all four bands if well, I do you anything I would do two that's what I was thinking I would try it on and mm -hmm. see how it's fitting it's top down so mm -hmm. that's one nice thing about top mm -hmm. down and yeah. and I know that I won't run out of the blue yarn because I have plenty of it I basically I have enough to make like a long sleeved sweater um in a single color so yeah. I have plenty of yarn it's not a yarn issue um needing to put that color work in so we'll we'll see stay tuned I may leave that color band off I had been sort of circling yeah. around it I definitely am not ending it the way the pattern calls yeah. for so well it's really pretty and I mean there's you. enough detail in the top of it that if you didn't I think it's it, not I don't think you would feel like you're missing anything. What I could do, I haven't looked far enough in the patterns. Shh, I haven't read the pattern all the way through. <laughs> I've skimmed it. Um there's sort of these like eyelet yeah. rows and oh, I do might it. do like an eyelet row before like the seed stitch mm -hmm. at the bottom to add just to Tied carry together a little bit. Yeah. And there is seed stitch, it looks like in the middle at the top. Yeah. Part. And so. both so, so we'll see. So stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, it definitely would probably get finished quicker if I didn't have to put deal with the color work. Because if I don't have to pick up a chart and can just cruise, yeah. 
Yeah. Though I've got like six inches or eight inches before I have to make a decision anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got a little bit of I got some time. time. I'll go up some time. Um, so what I'm working on here is I'm just doing my chart, yeah. or my chart, my swatch for Willow, which is a pattern in um, the Plain and Simple book mm -hmm. by Pam Allen. Um, and this is the yarn that you pirated from Humulus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to do Humulus, but I just wasn't liking the the feel of the yarn that I was as I was having to knit it to get close to gauge, um, I had to drop down, I think, to, what, like a five? I think it called for a six in the pattern, and I ended up, I did it on a six, and I wasn't getting gauge, so I was going to have to drop to a five. And I really wasn't enjoying, this is uh, Quince and Co. Owl, mm -hmm. and I really wasn't enjoying knitting it on a five. Mm -hmm. um, it was really, really dense, and it was bothering my hands yep. um, to knit it that way. And it felt, when I was knitting with it on a five, it was almost like knitting with cotton when yeah. there's no yeah. give to it at all. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny that I was doing that, because this is um, this swatch I'm knitting on sevens, and I'm loving knitting with nice. it. But I really didn't enjoy knitting it with a, on a tight gauge. So I'm hoping that I get gauge um, on the sevens. And I know I'm not doing a gauge swatch in the round. Um, so if I knit the way I traditionally knit, which is throwing or kind of modified flicking, um, my gauge between my knit and my purl stitches are, is really, really close. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't tend to do uh, swatches in the round. Um, if I were knitting continental, I would because I know my my gauge is very different between mm -hmm. well not very different but it's different it's enough, enough between my problem. yeah between my knit and my pearl rows. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, this colorway I think it's called Albertine, um, and we just got a whole bunch yeah. of more owl in Ooh, stock, cool. um, and we got more of the the Quince and Co books, uh, the Pam Allen's book in stock because we had sold almost completely out of it. I brought a whole bunch in. Nice. It's a lovely, lovely book. Awesome. Um, and every pattern in the book uses Quince & Co. Owl, um, which is a wool and alpaca blend. It's a 50-50 blend. Nice. Um, and it's, it is really nice, especially when you're knitting it at, at a little a bit of a looser gauge. gauge. Yeah. yeah, it's really super soft and just lovely. And it has a little bit of a rustic look to it. Mm -hmm. um, kind of Yeah. So, and this is one of the undyed, so they have a, quite a few that are undyed where they just use the natural colors of the sheep's wool and the alpaca um, to blend to get certain colors. So that's what this is that I'm working on. Nice. And um, which I will hopefully have another FO here soon. Woohoo! I know. So I have one other project. I only have worked on two things in like the last two weeks. I feel like I have very little to show for. <laughs> I have not opened this knitting bag up um, since we got back. This is an utterly adorable knits um, bag. I like her bag. She does a nice job. She finds really cute fabric, too. I should share the one that my yarn for my socks There's, is in. It's hilarious. Um, I'll give Kelly a whiff of this bag. <laughs> sunscreen. It smells like sunscreen. Because uh -huh. in the sun gets my, it was my, this was my beach knitting project. <laughs> Um, that's so Because it was small and light, and I figured if I got sand in it, it didn't matter because it would wash out. So yeah. I've been working on the it's pretty. Oh, I like the way that's knitting it up. Rainbows. So here's my little tea carafe marker from where I showed you the last time. So mm -hmm. pretty good progress. I think I'm up to like 26 teeth yep. at this point. So I'm kind of cruising along. I've got you know, that much yarn left, maybe mm -hmm. half a skein. I really also. like the way that's knitting up. It's really Thank pretty. Thank you. It's, um... That was a painted desert? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, um, what was the colorway? Sour grapes? Sour mm -hmm. tart? Sour grapes? Some, I don't know. <laughs> I think there's one of each it's that they on, make. They oh, make a lot of no. colors. It's on my project page. Yeah. Well, I, we'll link to that. So. Yes. I was looking to see if the tag was in here. Maybe I it's still in Hawaii. <laughs> Sometimes the tags go missing in my A. Um, so anyway, so that's, so that's that one. It's pretty fun. Um, this when I when I finally get it done, probably will be a shop sample because this is a yarn that uh, tends to do better when people yeah when you can, can see, see it. it knit up and see what it what it does. Um, yeah. So definitely, and and the hitchhiker is such a great fun oh, easy it's pattern so fun. that it's nice to have one or more in the shop so people can see yeah. the way yarn knits up. Yeah. So 
So I'm gonna actually tag this over on this so I can count, so I can keep track of which little doohickey <laughs> point I'm on. So I'm moving my marker to this side. There you go. Mm -hmm. You should probably not put it right on the point. It'll stretch out the uh -huh. so you have one point that's going to be like, that's weird. <laughs> be like, what happened there? Oh, right. That's where I put it. So, and I've been using um, one of our uh, listeners uh, posted a really helpful suggestion for how to keep track which row you're on by mm -hmm. using a stitch marker on this end, uh, which I have found to be incredibly helpful. Because, like, if I put this down, now I know where I am. You know how many rows, know how many rows in. into the... It's yeah. an eight-row mm -hmm. repeat. Yep. Um, so that's been really helpful. Yeah, I read that, that tip, and it was really... It was kind of yeah. cool to have that. And people have been doing some really cool... There's, like, an eyelet variation mm -hmm. and, you know, some other stuff um, to this pattern. Yeah. and. We uh, are closing probably by the time this airs. The It'll be closed. finished object thread yes. will be closed. Um, we're not drawing prizes this week because I just I'm not that organized yet. And <laughs> just week. still dealing with yeah post vacation yeah. stuff. Um, so next week. Yep. Okay. We'll draw prizes. Yeah, we'll then. draw prizes for the um, yeah. hitchhiker knit along, which has people have been super. I know. It's lots been of projects, and along. you might have to do a couple different projects. I know. A couple different prizes because we've had so many entries, like one for the chatter thread, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been fun. Yeah, it has so. been, and we've had some people come into the store and show us our projects, which is really fun. That is super fun. I know. I love seeing them yeah. in person. It's yeah. great. So, so those are the like the two things I've been working on, and I feel like I've made no progress. Though this is actually a lot of knitting. Yeah, it is a lot of knitting. Um, I mean, I have a, the, I mean, the finished ones that I have are really small. So, um, but I did bring in my Nanil chick. That is so awesome. I have put. I've been really, really monogamous, and I've been cranking away. So. Last time I showed this, which was probably a few weeks ago, even longer, maybe a month ago, I was right here. So I had done from the collar down to this point. So now I've done from this little guy. So this is my little hot chocolate guy that I got at Needles Up, um, super, super miniatures. And it's got a little sheep in the, in the cream on top. So it's the cutest little thing. Um, so I've gotten quite far. Um, and the, the light is getting, it's blowing them out a little bit. But, and I've had some places where, um, so I'm using mostly Primrose. The only one that's not Primrose is the Dark. And this is a Madeline Tosh, uh, the Tosh Sport. And so that, the rest of it is um, Primrose. And um, so the, this is Hotel California, this kind of goldish yellow one. Um, but it does have pops of, this green in it and this green is called Bebe yeah. and then this one is um, the light is snowy owl and that's my main color that's the one that you can see up here oops look at all my ends um <laughs> the other problem with color work I lots know. of ends to weave well in. and I was some of them I and places where I could I would carry it you know but then there's yeah. some, I was got sick of it and there's um some of the rows where you're using three colors and that just it's it's not as fun to do three colors in a row. It's gonna show you where, on one of these, I clearly forgot that I was <laughs> carrying, and I was like, nah, I'll just leave some extra. It'll be fine. Yeah. So I ended up. I don't. I don't mind weaving in ends that much. So I decided just to um, to cut some of them as I was going, and then I'll just weave them in when I get done. Um, because it was just easier. Because then it wasn't as tangly of a mess and. So now yeah, I've got, if you were doing three colors at once, that, yeah. would, that gets a little so wild. So now I've got this little little tail of yeah. ends. But that's fine, and, you know, to each their own, right? Uh, so I have exactly. I'm got one more row on this chart that I'm working on now, um, which are these cool little diamond shapes nice. here. Um, so I've got one more row on that chart, and then I've got two more rows, and then it's just body down. And then, um, and then I'll be doing the sleeves. Um, well, actually I have to, I'm close to the point, whoops, I'm dropping stitches. Um, close to the point where I'm gonna be separating for sleeves because there are little sleeves. If you haven't seen the swancho, the nail chick swancho before. Kelly's at the point that I was at with this where I felt like I was in the black hole where 
I was never going to divide for the sleeves. <laughs> There's a lot of stitches, but the fun part with this is because I'm still doing color work down mm -hmm. to before where the sleeves separate, you, you're you still it's, like, ooh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do this row, but yeah. the, it's just the rows are taking longer. Yeah. So, but now I'm, I'm like, okay, I've got two more charts to go. So like I've been counting down by the, the chart, yes. you know, the first part up to like where my little where my little was progress keeper really was. Fast. That's like really fast. And then you're like, oh, another increase row. And then you do like another chart. Oh, another increase row. And you know, up to almost what, like three, close to 300 yeah. stitches on the needle. And then it, it takes a lot longer to go around. So, um, but it's, it's uh, coming out really well. And I like doing color work because every time I do more color work, like my technique improves. Mm -hmm. And I found, um, I used to always, and, uh, and even through the beginning of this project, I would carry my, one yarn in my right hand, one yarn in my left hand. And I found that my tension between my yarns, and I can tell even on this row, it's a lot smoother. Um, for me, works so much better carrying both yarns in my left hand. Oh, I carry, I carry both of mine in this is my right hand. So I, I actually knit continental this whole, when I get down to the, even when I do um, the, um, where I'm just doing the solid color, the, the snowy owl color, yeah. I'm going to just um, knit continental the rest of the way and, right. um, and just finish that way yeah. um, so that my gauge will stay more consistent. Uh, but yeah, it's going yeah. really well and I'm enjoying the color work part of it. and. I have another project picked out that's color work, <laughs> and it's fingering weight. <laughs> she could come be in my land. Except for mine has sleeves, the one I'm looking oh. at. So I just have to decide on colors, but... Nice. Yeah. Oh, I am, though. I'll show you this. So my mom got me... Maybe I will. My mom... It was, like, perfect timing, so thanks, Mom. My mom got me this bag for Christmas, and it looks enormous, but it's super helpful because... So, this is Stitch Happy. Um, it actually, if you open it up, it's... The divider got a little wonky because I was moving it around and stuff. But it's got a divider in it, and so I can... And this is a four-color project, so it worked out perfectly. And then it's got the separators on top, but these are big enough so you can pop the balls in and out through these, mm -hmm. too. So you're not... Once they're attached, it's not like they're permanently, like, right. attached, stuck, stuck yeah. in the bag, uh, which is really nice. And then it's got some really useful utility pockets across the top. So I don't know where she got this because I got it for Christmas. Um, but it's been really handy for this project, uh, nice. especially keeping the tangles at bay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is the one downside with color work is tangly balls of yarn. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kept each of the, the balls in the separate pockets. So I haven't, you know, when I go to pull it out, if, you know, I don't have to sort through all the the colors. So that's been really nice. Um, although when I get down to one color, I'll probably put it into a smaller bag and um, yeah. and then reserve that bag for my next color work project. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I had, so kind of jumping, jumping a little bit ahead. Um, I had balled up a skein of yarn and I was going to knit a project with it while I was away. Um, but that didn't happen. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to knit something out of this yarn is that it's for our next Seasons of Vermont mm -hmm. box, which is coming, um, up. coming up on the 15th. Yep. So I wanted to be able to give everybody a little preview of the yarn and what the yarn looked like knit up. Uh, <laughs> and I have totally not accomplished that. So, may, so I think this project here is going to get set aside because this next week I'm going to do that, but I am going to show you the yarn. So the theme for the next box is called Sugar and Time. Um, like maple sugar. Like maple sugar, uh, because it is that time of year here. March and April are, though one wouldn't know it because the last week or so the sap's been running like crazy yeah, because of warm the weather. Mm -hmm. Warm days, cool nights. Mm -hmm. That's which it. is what gets it going like gangbusters. Yeah. Um, but normally March and April is a big maple uh, syrup producing time for our state mm -hmm. and this region. Uh, so we wanted to do a box around that theme. Mm -hmm. uh, so with Rather that, than mud season, which I is know. a very, you know. know. Maybe next year we'll do mud <laughs> season. I want to do like the... The, the the nasty things of Vermont. We were talking like black fly season, <laughs> mud season, 
Uh huh. Um, anyway, that's just my <laughs> sense of humor. But so the yarn for this particular box was created by um, a comp Rachel, who has Silkworm Studios, and she's out of California. You can find her on Etsy. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got she's got an Instagram account. Instagram account follow. as well. She's got beautiful yarn. It's yeah. absolutely lovely. And so she designed um, or created this yarn for us. And actually, the colors are coming up pretty yeah, well. Greens, it's really lovely. Uh, different shades of greens, a white cream. There's some red rust and red flecks in there. Uh, and she called this uh, Sugar and Time, I think was uh, the name that she gave it. Mm -hmm. It is a DK weight yarn. So we decided to go with a different weight of yarn for this box. So the patterns that we're going to suggest are hats and mitts. Um, I think there's a cowl in there. You know, things that you could knit relatively quick, but that you would use this time of year, at least where we live. Yeah. Um, but of course, you can always incorporate this in anything, anything else. Um, so this is the yarn for the next box. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And we'll show it. So next week, maybe what we'll do is we'll pull everything that's going to go mm -hmm. into the box. Mm -hmm. um, because the the following week is when it's actually going live. So next Ooh. week, I know, <laughs> next week we'll pull everything and mm -hmm. um, show you, the show you guys. The and... project bag is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really adorable. And um, all kinds of little the goodies and gadgets. Goodies that we have to go in this box. Yeah, so we'll do that so that you guys can see what's mm -hmm. going in it because yep. then it'll be going live the following Thursday. Yep, and um, so one change from the last box. Uh, the price is going to be still $75, but we are not including shipping. That caused a whole bunch of kerfuffles for us. Um, not for you guys, but for us. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's just going to be easier to just not include shipping. Well, so. and then, like, because we kind of had a set price that was an average that figured into what the, the box would be, you know, there's going to be some people that it'll be, you know, I don't want to say less expensive, but, you know, because yeah. if, if they're in the Northeast, it'll end up... But not to enable more, if you spend $125 <laughs> on the website, you get free shipping. 150 150 150 Just saying. Yeah. If you buy two boxes, <laughs> you get free shipping. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> um, so that was unfortunately one of those things we just kind of had to work through um, the last time. Yeah. It's a experience for us, and uh, we're trying to minimize sort of the box. We were trying arrows. to blow up our system is what we were trying yeah. to do, and it was hating us. So Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, fun times. But so that's the deal. Say $5. No, no shipping included this time. Yep. Um, those will go live on the 15th at noon. Um, and I will hopefully have those all packed up because I'm in trial all day that day. So are you? I'm not even going to be here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No podcasting then. We'll have to podcast a different day. Okay. Okay. We'll figure it out. Sorry. Well, I know you guys, you guys <laughs> are used, used to, to our planning. planning on the air. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's that. So we're super excited. There's lots of cool stuff going in this box. Um, and we are uh, getting starting to get some of the things in for the other boxes as well. Yeah. Um, so this is super, super fun. Super fun. Really exciting. Cool things. We hope you guys are ex excited about all of these as we are. Because mm -hmm. it's been pretty fun to put them together. And I did um, the stuff for the sheets. I started that a while ago. It's in the Dropbox. Not in the drop. Yeah, it's in the Dropbox folder. Just so you know. Oh, oh, so I can do my. So you can do your thingy. magic. Okay. Your magic insert. Awesome. I can do that. Yeah. And I think all the logos and stuff are there. Too. Sweet. I know. There you go. I know. Yeah, don't let me forget. <laughs> I'll I'm put it on my like to do color. list. I'm starting to try to get myself. Or I'm a list maker. Mm. And I need to, like, have a list so that I can cross things off it and yeah. I have I like the satisfaction of crossing things off of it because I'm like look at all the things I, I did I even a, if I did them anyway and I have a list and I can't find my list mm. gets buried on my desk mm. and I can't find it I'm like this is not helpful well I put it I've got I'm trying an organizer and I'm trying to be organized and I'm fairly organized but um, and I've used my phone for a lot of appointments and <laughs> I just drooled water all down myself. Apparently I don't know how to drink. <laughs> yeah. 
I have you on days like that. Um, so I've, I've got these little list things in here, and since we didn't have a chance to get show notes put together, I've got a whole list of notes over here, and I'm going to get some show notes done very soon. We are flying by the seat of our pants, and that might yeah. be our show note, or mm -hmm. episode title. <laughs> mm -hmm. Flying. Um, so we uh, have the Hitchhiker Cow, which Ange was talking about, our yep. Hitchhiker. That ended, and we're going to have the thread closed. Um, actually, I'm going to go close that after we get done recording. Yep. So we'll draw prizes next week for that, yep. which I think we talked about in the, the intake, outtake, intro thing yeah. that we did. Yeah. Um, and with the other net along that's currently running through the middle of April is the um, Spice Market Shawl. Mm -hmm. Which neither Angela uh, or I We have. picked this uh, pattern because Kelly and I both want to knit it mm -hmm. and neither of us have started it. So, yeah. go us. <laughs> Yay, us. <laughs> I've been in such a sweater knitting mood that I haven't been able to pull yeah, myself away from that. There's that's... such satisfaction in it for me lately. Yeah. Like finishing sweaters. Yeah. And I've been, I've been on this monogamous kick and I really don't want to break that because I'm actually like finishing You're things. like, I'm going to finish something. <laughs> So, um, so I might start it. Just I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. I might. I might. Um, and then we're kind of knitting along with the Barogo Lopi knit along. Yep. Um, we're not doing anything formal for that. We're just we just kinda, posted some information on our yep Ravelry board. Wanted to let you guys know about it more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know there's a few people who are doing some cool Lopi yep. sweaters for that. We had at least one suggestion for the next knit along to be some sort of like summer t-shirt type thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. It is a good idea. So um, we'll um, start looking at some patterns. Yeah, maybe we'll, I mean, obviously this is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, uh, Ange and I have both done some other ones. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, we could always just do one where it's like, here's a group of patterns or here's sort of the parameters. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> choose your own, choose your own adventure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I think that's all we've got for knit alongs presently, mm -hmm. um, but since we'll be wrapping them up um, in the next month yeah. or so. We'll probably be looking to start. We'll probably, yeah, so we'll start putting together some ideas. Uh, maybe we'll just do kind of a summer lightweight yarn yeah. knit along. So as you can see, you can always layer. Absolutely. We have to be very good at layering up here. Oh, yes. Yes, um, yes, yes, we do. So we have a few new products in the store. We actually have a do. lot of new products. We've I walked in and I'm like, I don't know where anything is. We've got a lot of new spring yarns, uh, so check <clears> those out. I try to put all of the new ones. Um, if you go to the very bottom of our homepage when you go to mustloveyarn.com, there's a section at the bottom and it says new yarns and products, and I try to tag everything that's really new and put it there i'm not i forget sometimes forget because we get a bunch of new stuff all at once mm -hmm. um but we have we do have some fun new things um one thing that we do have we did get in the wrist rulers um which these are really fun so we've got there's four different colors and we've got them in uh three, three sizes. sizes yeah i kind of i picked the mid-range sizes yeah. so i didn't get the super small one or the super big one so basically what you do to figure out what size you are, measure around your wrist twice and add about an inch. Um, and if you're not sure of what size, I usually would err, like if you fall kind of in between, go up uh, just because you you want some room. You don't want it really tight um, because you don't want them getting really stretched out on you mm -hmm. because then they're not going to be as accurate. Um, not that I would, you know, be measuring something that I need really like important. super accurate, but um and they, they're really stiff when you get them. Not really stiff, but they're pretty stiff when you get them. But I've only been wearing this for, I think, like a week or so, week, week and a half. And it's really loosened up a lot. Oh, nice. It's really, really soft. And um, so they just have, like, a little stud closure. And then there's a... Um, and then there's just a little slip that they, the stud goes into. Um, so, and that that's really tight when you first get them. Um, <laughs> to to kind of push that in. Um, so a woman bought one the other day, and she's like, "You think you can help me get this on?" Because <laughs> um, they are a little bit hard to get on by yourself when you're when they're brand brand new. Because yeah. they are kind of stiff. Um, but now this one, I mean, 
it goes right on pretty easily. So this is the medium color. There's one that's natural. Um, the, it's a really, that's lighter than this. This is the medium. There's a dark brown and there's a black as well. And they're all really cool. Um, the darker two, you can't see the numbering on them as well, but they're still really cool. I like yeah. those too. Um, the black one has a brass stud, so it's not the silver, it's got a brass. Um, nice. So that's that. Uh, oh, I've got, I've got the other, the other new got, things. You've got the stuff. Um, we didn't, nice. I mean, yeah. None, no, we don't even need to really mention this, talk about this or anything. The new Lane magazine is here in the store, though, and it's lovely. I got a co my copy as soon as they came in on, I think they arrived on Monday or Tuesday. Monday. They came in on Monday. Monday? Yeah, I think Monday. <laughs> I don't know. I can't keep track of these things anymore. And so I've been reading all the articles at night, and there's some really great patterns in here. Um, and you can see all of the patterns. They they list them on Ravelry. They don't they're not for sale individually, but you can see all of the different patterns on Ravelry. So you can decide if um, it's worth it to you to buy the magazine. Nice. Um, there's an interview in here with Jared Flood. Um, there's an interview in here about um, yeah. There we go. Tolt Yarn and Wall Company. Um, there are some really good recipes. Oh my gosh, there's one for like a cinnamon roll recipe. Mm. And I was like, oh, I think I have to make that. Yum. Um, it's called, yeah, Nordic cinnamon rolls. Yum. It looks amazing. Um, there's a red wine stew recipe in here that they serve over garlic mashed potatoes. Yum. <laughs> yeah. So, and, the, and that's not even just talking about the, the actual patterns that are in here, which are as usual it's just really really lovely i like that little cardigan it's very feminine kind of but simple at the same time that one's called kate that's really pretty um there's just some really nice ones in oh i like this one too lakeland lakeland that one's cute i like the texture on the front of that um but i won't go through them all but we do have it in stock uh it's 28 dollars for the magazine and um, unfortunately there is shipping on top of that so magazines can't ship media mail um, because they have ads in them you can't ship anything media mail with ads which is unfortunate because media mail makes it pretty inexpensive yeah. to ship things um, so that's the reason you, we can't ship these media mail um, and the other unfortunate thing this issue weighs over a pound so it has to go priority mail mm -hmm. So it's expensive to ship. Just a little warning that you know, if you can't get it locally, it's gonna it's gonna be pricey to ship. It's probably gonna be around ten dollars or so. It's gonna depend on where you live um, to some degree, but um, that's that's the way it is. Um, even when they ship them to us, they can't ship them medium mail, even though we're we're buying them to resell um, because they're magazines. They have ads in them. You can't send them medium mail. Uh, so that's weird postal regulations. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Um, so just a little heads up. A little warning on that. Um, so if you can get it locally, obviously you probably want to do that. Local shop. Yeah. Uh, but if not, I mean, we're happy to ship them to you. We just don't want you to get it in your cart and be like, oh my God, Ooh. the shipping is, <laughs> is really ridiculous. Um, so the other thing that we got from Lane is their knitting journal, which is called My Knitting Notes. Mm. And this is really lovely. Uh, it's a hardbound cloth um, cover book. And it's got, uh, I think, room to do 31 projects, I think. Something like that. Um, and there's uh, like conversion charts and things in the beginning. Oh, nice. um, really handy, handy tools. There's pages of... Um, measuring Some you can rulers. places to take you know yes. notes and things like that if you want to do that um and there's standard abbreviations knitting is standard knitting abbreviations in here um so what you'll get is you'll get um it'll have this two pages of lined um with some um you know the type of yarn you use the designer the pattern name that kind of thing um and then you turn the page and then there's two blank pages so if you want to include sketches or uh, notes or swatches or things like that. Um, the only problem is that it is uh, bound 
and it's not like a spiral bound or anything like that. So if you do put swatches in, it's probably going to break the binding on them. Um, at the end, there actually is some grid paper too. So that if you want to use it more as a design book, mm -hmm. um, it'd be really handy for that. And there's quite a lot of the grid, um, grid pages at the back. So, um, they're really nice. Um, you can keep track of your yarn stash in the back as well um so there is a section for that seems like a really short section yeah i know right for some of us i know but if you're doing one of these like one a year i know then you can no, kind of keep track of like your yearly or your well, purchases for that year no. yeah i know would it fit I don't know. um so these are retailing for 25 dollars, <laughs> and uh we have a few of these in in store um i didn't bring a lot in because it's not everybody's thing especially with ravelry yeah um and the other thing uh if anybody out there is missing lane issue three i did get a few copies back in of that too because they did a reprint of that um the other thing that I'll mention, and that's been kind of going around a lot, a lot of people are noticing there's a big difference between issues one and two and three and four. The difference for that is uh, Lane switched printers uh, after they released issue two. So issues three and four are with, have been printed with a new printer. And so the size is a little bit different, the paper's a little bit different, and I know that some people have been like, so issues three and four were printed from the same. They're actually going to reprint issues one and two with this mm -hmm. new printer at some point. They're not sure exactly when. Um, so uh, we probably will bring in at least a few copies of those so that people can have the whole collection if they want. And um, that's, the, that's the scoop with that. So if nice. you're wondering why <laughs> why the, your, your issues of Lane are a little bit different, that's why. Excellent. Yeah. So that's, uh, well, other than we've gotten a lot of new yarn, mm -hmm. but we won't go through all we'll, of that. We'll debut some of those in the uh, coming weeks as that, like yeah. picks of the week and stuff. Exactly. That's part of what we use that for is to showcase yeah. some new to us yarns or new in the store. Um, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And um, if we decide to do like a, a summer top knit along or summer knit along, mm -hmm. um, you can stock up on the yarns. People have been taking advantage. They really like the Medina. That's a lovely yeah. yarn. Uh, it's really pretty. So we've been sending a lot of that out to you guys. Yeah. So uh, I know I've seen some on Instagram too. People knitting some of those yeah. projects. Yeah, so. they're really cool. Yeah. So. But I don't think I have anything else, and you probably have no, to get I gotta go get headed out. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys. Thanks for yeah. everybody, all the new viewers and our viewers that have been sticking through with us. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate you, we, you guys, and all of your lovely comments. And I know it's been. Yeah. We've been quiet for a little bit, but um, we read everything that you write to us. We don't always get a chance to respond. But. I don't know. I've been posting that on Instagram. Mm -hmm. A little bit. A few a beach bit, pictures. A few pictures. I know. I know. A couple pictures. So I've been. I did not post the lens, the mudslide picture on. I think I posted true. that on Facebook. Facebook, you did. Yeah. Ange got stuck in Hawaii for a couple I got extra stuck days. For a couple, I know. It's a horrible spot to get stuck. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was interesting, but yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So we will, we'll be back next week. Be back sure. next week and we'll do the, the prize giveaway for the hitchhiker. We'll have more mm -hmm. picks of the week. Yep. Um, and, and we'll have this whole seasons of, for yeah, the, box the whole for, collection. We'll show you. pull everything out and, um, mm -hmm. get that together so you can see what's mm -hmm. going to be in that because it's going to be excellent. Be awesome. Uh, we're going to do 25 of those again. Yep. So um, it, it sold out in a couple days last mm -hmm. time, um, but it wasn't super crazy. So if you want one, you're probably going to be able to get one. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And if you don't get on like the computer right at noon when they go live, um, definitely come over and take a look. Um, if you if you would like yeah because we had some people who are like oh you know they sold out they, they must have sold out I'm not yeah. even gonna go and look the chances are there might be there yeah. might be still some there so Absolutely. Uh, definitely be sure to check even if you don't think that you made it in time yep. um, I know some yarn updates <laughs> that people do for some they of the indie dyed crazy. yarns they they just fly so um, but you know check it out because we've got there's enough of them and they're they're pricey so you know it's not everybody's not, thing yeah. 
So, yeah. uh, but there's some great, great companies, and we love being able to support some of the smaller indie dyers and introduce them to you. Yeah, I mean, even if it's not something where we can have a full line of their yarns in the store, we want right. to be able to support them in in ways that we can. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, awesome. so we will see you guys next week. See you next and week. Happy knitting. Have a great weekend, yes. and hopefully the. Horrible weather that's been hitting a lot of different people isn't affecting you. Yeah. And if it is, if it is, stay safe. Happy knitting. But yeah, <laughs> I hope you have a big supply of yarn. Yes. To get you through it. I, the apocalypse could come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be in, I'm going to be knitting for, for years. I would be the person sitting in the back and like going through my stash being like, I have nothing to knit on. <laughs> I know. Because I'd find a project that I did not have yarn for. Yeah. It would yeah. be like the one thing. Yeah. Like, well, I can't put those colors together. Or, that yarn weight isn't right. Or I don't have quite enough of that particular yarn. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Knitting problems. I know. <laughs> yarn problems. Seriously. That might be a better title for this episode. Yeah. Yarn problems. Yarn problems. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag yarn problems. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you guys next week. Yes, we will. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. While we're uh, while I'm on vacation and um, my reality is far different. I'm making notes since we haven't done chat. Yeah. Chat. So I'm. <laughs> okay. Okay. So our do we want to be like wicked organized and come up with a code? Since this will go at the end anyway. What are we doing? Weekly oh, we're doing Woolen the Gang and Woolen. Woolen, Woolen. We could do Woolen Gang. <laughs> woolen Gang. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so. Woolen Gang. Woolen Gang. Okay. Weekly pick. Literally, if somebody hadn't tagged me, or sent, somebody sent me a private message on Instagram telling me that I'd want a prize on the... I the saw that. Long but she did that, like, so quickly after Mina announced it that I was like, that's not very nice. You're supposed to wait. Like, if people... Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad she did. I would have never... I would have never seen it. <laughs> I wouldn't funny. have had to... I just, we were getting... Yeah. I was walking out the door to go on vacation, and then I had to take five minutes. It was a short video. I had to take five minutes to watch it. Yeah, it I would have. Really I would have never. It's kind of it nice otherwise. that Mina does that because then if people haven't entered in any of her they contests, then it. they don't have to necessarily watch it. Or they it. just assume they don't win. I, <laughs> or forgot that they entered. That was me. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, how? Why did I win a prize? <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember entering, and I was like, oh. I posted my road to Rhinebeck shawl on one of her threads when mm -hmm. I got done with it because I was out there on a. I gotta look and see how much those are. I, w I was out on the boards and just was like, oh, cool. <laughs> Go figure. I know. Wool and the king. Come on. I wore my drecho with a t shirt. Uh, well, actually, I didn't wear this in because it was still damp when I was mm -hmm. brought it in. But then I put it on when I got here because it was kind of still damp. But, nice. Um, but I have a t-shirt on underneath, so when I leave tonight, I'll just pull this off and like put it on a mannequin. There you go. Cool. Cute little beans. And the, really? That's not the first thing that's going to come up? <clears throat> Seriously? Okay. They are $17.99. That's pretty. That's not bad. Have you cast on for uh, the On the Spice Market? Nope. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> it was so funny. Somebody else had posted that. They're like, yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> they're like, got the pattern, got the yarn, <laughs> ready to go. Have I, I cast on? Nope. Half the yarn balled up. Yeah, I haven't even done it. It went in a car to Boston. And then um, I was going to bring it. And I was like, lady, you, you are mm -hmm. insane. There is no way you're going to run out of yarn. Mm -hmm. You need to leave this. So I left it. I'm glad I did because I would have not touched it at all. Yeah. And, yeah. Because yeah. So, no, no knitting on the plane for me. No, this is funny. 
so when you go through security now, this must this is a new. I guess I haven't flown in a couple of years, mm -hmm. a year or so. You have to take any food you have out, and it has to go separately in a bin. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is new. Oh, yeah, because I've never had to do that before. So, uh, in both directions, going through the TSA stuff, our a bag got pulled of ours. Um, really? The first time, because we had no idea that you had to take all your food out, and then we had like food stashed in like all these different yeah. bags. Yeah. For the for yeah. the carry-ons, and um, I forgot that I had like a whole packet of stuff in like William's backpack, so his uh, backpack got pulled aside. Oh no! Which is fine, you know yeah. this, that, and the other. And so we get done with security, and we're walking. And I looked, I turned to John. And I was like, "So we can't have food in our bag, and that gets it pulled aside. But I got all kinds of stuff in my bag." Right. And he goes, "You do?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes. Well, that's just weird. Like, not weird, like, they have name stuff. But, but that, that he didn't that, stop it? That, that didn't matter. But that's weird. the dried apricots <laughs> were a matter of national security, apparently. And on the way back, we pulled all the food out because we've been through this before. Mm -hmm. We had a package of baby wipes. And apparently that, like, set off some something or other, like, to the point where they had to, like, scrub it with a little thing and, you know, make sure it wasn't an explosive. And I was like, it's a package of baby wipes. I'm traveling I wonder if it's because they're in a, like, foil packaging. And wet. Um, right? They're wet. But they're not that wet. I, they could have, like, pull it out and, like, lay it on fire. <laughs> our bag got flagged because of the baby wipes huh, okay. on the way through. And you're traveling out. with a baby. Yes, clearly a person of the size that would require baby wipes. Yeah. Yeah. But neither time knitting needles <laughs> or any knitting paraphernalia yeah. cause any kerfuffle. I forgot one thing. Okay. One. I have an FO, I have an HO. Woo. Yeah. I might take a page out of your playbook and do the sleeves on this thing soon. Is it short sleeves? It's just a few rows. Mm -hmm. That's what I did on this. Yeah. Because then when I finish this part, I'm done. Done, done. Done. The done, done, and done. 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 I don't know why I thought that I could knit a fingering weight sweater in like 10 days. <laughs> Even if it didn't have sleeves, I don't know why I thought that that was going to be a thing. <laughs> I think the part at which I reached like this part here where there was like 400 plus stitches on the needles. I was like, you, what, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I am, yeah. yeah. Ridiculous is all I can come up with. Yeah. Which seems to be the title of most of our podcasts these days. <laughs> ridiculous something. Upside down uh -huh. knitters, ridiculous knitters. Yep. Ridiculous weather. So I'm not really complaining. It's like 60 degrees out there. I know, it's been really nice. <clears throat> I've made some crazy progress on my Nanil chick. Cool. I'll cut that out. <laughs> or actually, I'll check to see if you can hear it. And if you can't hear it, then I'm not cutting it. <laughs> my head was right there, so you probably, probably. can't hear it. I forget. I don't have to tag it as explicit, Kel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is my swatchy. I've got too much gray yarn here, mm. and I can't tell which is. Yeah. Where'd you work tonight? Um, those were the socks for the sock class, because I had to have them both at the point where I could oh, demonstrate right. one turning a heel and the other one how to do Kitchener stitch, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the other is my swatch for Willow. Nice. Yeah. So, oops, needles came out. Don't mind me. There. Okay. Oof. All right. I wonder if I did all my decreases on this one, yeah. I don't know if I did. the first time I've knitted since Sunday. That should give you some sense of how things have been going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
gracious. Yes. That's not That's good. very unusual for me to go that long. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while I will, but yeah, sometimes when... I literally just have not had the time. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't sound like you really have. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, I've got my book here. Okay. So if we start show notes... I, mean, I, can, I can try that. I can I can start it if you want to just pop in the things. All right, so. I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> you know me. I'm not, people aren't okay. even going to see my feet this week. Well, I know what projects so. I have and I know what um, I have I'm wearing. So this Virgil so and, and is, um, my Hitchhiker. Those are the only two things I've been working on. Virgil and Hitchhiker. All right. Yeah. That's easy. I can take care of that. Okay. I got, awesome. I got show notes this okay. week. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then mine I will put in, can't see, wearing, because mine is going to be complicated because some of mine aren't in my Ravelry queue, okay. because they're patterns that I did. particularly it's like a nice basic pattern that one and I did it with tons of detail in the pattern because I wanted it to be like a really good beginner project yeah. so there's all kinds of like really useful notes and tips and stuff in there so cool I should take that alright we ready we's ready I'll I'm work ready. on my little swatchy over here don't mess with people it's Instead weird of because the of the the, the, the window. angle of yeah. it the way the light's hitting is really weird it's weird I need my sunglasses the camera on this side this time? It is. Oh. That's, that's why. why. <laughs> I'm flipping that over. That's going to mess me up. Because I was like, oh, wait. That's what it is. It's not the...